Well, thank you for staying for the news. In our first story, Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala Harris, has expressed her intent to reinforce uh, the USA's uh, partnership with Ghana and Af other African countries as she arrived in Accra to begin a tour of the African continent. Kamala Harris, while delivering her first address, stressed that the aim of her visit was to hold discussions that would foster opportunities in various sectors of the continent as she highlighted the important role Africa plays on the global stage. What an honor it is to be here in Ghana and on the continent of Africa. Today begins a week-long journey, first here in Ghana, then on to Tanzania, and then Zambia. On behalf of the President and our entire nation, we bring you greetings, and we are looking forward to this trip and very important relationship and friendship between the people of the United States and those who live on the continent of Africa. I'm very excited about the future of Africa. I'm very excited about the impact of the future of Africa on the rest of the world, including the United States of America. When I look at what is happening on this continent and the fact that the median age is 19 years old, and what that tells us about the growth of opportunity, of innovation, of possibilities. I see in all of that great opportunity, not only for the people of this continent, but the people of the world, especially when we understand that by the year 2050, we believe one in four people on Earth will be on the continent of Africa. That relate to the partnership between this continent, its people, and the people of the United States. And to reinforce the work that we will continue to do together. Be that on addressing the climate crisis, to supply chains, to our work together on international rules and norms. In particular on this trip, I intend to do work that is focused on increasing investments here on the continent and facilitating economic growth and opportunity, specifically in the areas of economic empowerment of women and girls, empowerment of youth entrepreneurship, digital inclusion, and to support the work that must be done to increase food security, including adaptation to the effects of the climate crisis. I look forward to my meetings with President Akufo-Addo, President Samia, and President Zuma. We will build on the previous meetings I have had with each of them to strengthen democracy and good governance, promote peace and security, build on long-term economic growth and strengthen our business ties. I also look forward during this visit to meet with entrepreneurs and artists and students and farmers to witness firsthand the extraordinary innovation and creativity that is occurring on this continent. Let's talk cyber hygiene now and the Economic and Organized Crime Office in response to Ghana's digitalization evolution is cautioning the public about the risks linked with cyber security. Internet users in Ghana currently stand at 23 million, representing 68.2% of the total population, with about 19.5% active social media users. Executive Director of IOKO COP, Mamiya Tiwadu Dankwa, says individuals need to be wary of cyber attacks. She spoke at a public lecture organized by the Kumasi Technical University. My colleague, Manaya Ojima, has more in this report. The public lecture was on the theme, Building a Sustainable Cybercrime-Free Society for Economic Development, COP. Tiwa Adudankwa observed a rise in online impersonation of high-profile personalities with new attack vectors emerging. 
she emphasized cyber crimes are becoming sophisticated as thousands of individuals and businesses are victimized. Cyber criminals have been quick to take advantage of the digital transformation of the economy to exploit and profit from emerging markets. Over the past few years, the cyber criminal markets have expanded and diversified. They have become adept at working together and across markets and linking up globally. This may detecting their tactics, techniques, and procedures sophisticated. Alongside the rise in cybercrime, attempts to disrupt critical technology enable resources and services have become more common. According to the 2019 Global Risk Report of the World Economic Forum, cyber attacks are currently among the top risk globally and they result in multi-million dollar losses. The market value estimate of cyber security is expected to increase from $120 billion to $300 billion by 2024. COP Adodankwa says the government is doing its part to reduce the impact. Building a society in which cyber crime is minimized is critical for economic development. Cyber crime can cause significant damage to individuals, businesses, and economies. By raising awareness, developing effective laws and regulations, promoting cybersecurity training, investing in technology, and establishing partnership, we can work together to prevent cyber crime and create a safer and more secure digital environment. Meanwhile, the director at the Institute of Research, Innovation and Development at Kumasi Technical University, Dr. Smart Sapon, emphasized the need for victims of cyber fraud to report incidents to the police. So we, we as an institution or institutions across the country are encouraged today to boldly come out and report incidences of cyber crime so the law enforcement agencies would know the changing trends uh, our criminals are using and meet them uh, squarely. If we fail to report, because currently the reporting is very, very low, yeah, we will not know the various trends by which these guys operate. And Let's get into politics now and uh, the new patriotic party's uh, flag bearer hopeful Alan Tremanting has disclosed his intention to institute an advisory council made up of prominent chiefs to advise him on matters of national development should he become president. The former Minister of Trade during his tour of the Northeast region also promised to revamp the agricultural sector by helping farmers own processing factories. Correspondent Ilyas Utanko now reports. Mr. Chairman first port of call was at the Nairi, where he met with the Mamprugo overlord and his royal court members. He is the first high-ranking member of the MPP to have come to the palace in the wake of the controversy surrounding the escapement of a new Boku Naba by the king of Mampurugu. His arrival at the palace was characterized by drumming and dancing by his supporters and campaign team members. Also present to welcome him were the East Mampurugu Municipal Chief Executive Rashida Mahama and the MPP chairman of Nalirugu Gambaga constituency. The MPP presidential flag bearer Hofo was led into the Nairi by former Northern Regional Minister Boniface Sadek, who also introduced Mr. Tremantin to the king and his elders. Before the king and his elders, Mr. Tremantin explained why he wants to be president. He talks about his vision to rehabilitate the chieftaincy institution to give chiefs leading roles in pursuit of grassroots development. I make sure that in addition to consultation with the National House of Chiefs, that I have an advisory council of very prominent chiefs here in the country to advance me on a national development agenda. Mr. Tremantin also complained about the unemployment situation in the country and said his policies and innovations will bring jobs to all Ghanaians. So we need a new leader who has a proven track record to introduce and execute initiatives on interventions that will bring jobs to our people. Now my political career, I've been talking about only three things. Jobs, jobs, and jobs. Most importantly, a former trade and industry minister promised to empower farmers to expand their resources 
by ensuring their own processing facilities and factories. The vision will be to help farmers in this country not only expand the equities that they cultivate, but also bring the full value of what they produce back to them. And the campus bond the grains of Amman and make sure that farmers own their own processing facilities and factories. He ended his address by asking the Manprugu king to bless and support his ambition. So the Royal Majesty will send in the and I pray that he lets me once I am back on this main journey. The king on his part welcomed Mr. Tremantin and his team to his palace and said as a father figure he was ready and willing to work and support any candidate who would be chosen by the delegates of the party. That uh, may God make it work based on your wishes. Whatever intentions that you have, if so by it that your intentions are on a good standing. The God Almighty will let you be. And your intentions are good. May God bless you. From the chief palace, Mr. Tremantin moved to address the delegates on air before holding a physical meeting with them at a hotel in Nalergo. You are looking for a flag bearer, but you are looking for a flag bearer who will become president. Yeah. So it is not just about your appeal within the NPP. Mm. It is ap about your appeal within the entire country of Ghana. Yeah. We need a candidate who can maximize our votes in the Ashanti region as strong. Mm. And I believe that if I become the flag bearer, I'll be able to achieve at least a minimum of 80 to 85 percent uh, votes in Ashanti region. That alone can guarantee us a uh, victory. Uh, in 2024. From Nalergo for Joy News, Ilias Sutanko reporting. Well, staying on that front, another uh, flag bearer hopeful of the new patriotic party, Kwabna Ejei Ejapong, says the continuous rollout of economic modules will not solve Ghana's economic problems. He wants government to restore order, discipline, and punitive measures for persons who dip their hands into the public purse. Rafik Salam reports from Engineer Japan's campaign tour in Wa. Shortly before he met members of the Upper West Regions Council of Elders, Regional and Constituency Executives of the MPP, Kobna Ajay Ajapon, in an exclusive interview with Joy News, refuted the narrative that politics is about money. I'm worried about the, the narrative that is being pushed around, that politics is about money. It's not about money. It's about principles. What the country needs now are intelligent leaders, thinking leaders who have empathy, who are put in there to serve the country and think about the betterment of especially the underprivileged in society. Governor Ajapon stated that the country has continued to roll out lots of economic models intended to lift the people from the poverty doldrums, but none has succeeded. He is however of the opinion that it is not the way to go, and given the opportunity, he will impose lots of order and discipline in the management of the country's pace. Right from the Rawlings era, economic recovery program, FinSAP, structural adjustment program, SAP, and then when my boss Kufo was in power, HIPIC. So it's not about the economic models. It's quite clearly is the implementation or the lack of it that is hurting us as a country. So I will impose a lot of order and discipline in our public finances. We all have been seeing the current reports of the Auditor General. There's a lot of wastage in the Ghanaian system. Wastage that does not get punished. There is no political will to punish those who tinker with our public treasury. And so that I want to restore that order to have a drastic penalty regime that would discourage potential offenders to be mindful of the way we run our budget. He said the MPP needs a new lease of life to bring energy and enthusiasm into the party, which for now is missing. We've had one ticket out of, at the top of the party for the last 16 years. 
President Akufuado and his vice, Dr. Baumia, were elected uh, in 2007 and he was appointed in 2008. And I think it changes good for politics. And that's why we have a two-term limit to presidential politics. Change brings new ideas, new energy, and orchestrates a new inspiration. That's what we need in our country. To reconnect to the base of our party, to reconnect with the people of the country, and for them to renew their faith in democracy and also to have faith in what we do as political leaders. The former press secretary to President Kufu maintained he and two top former national executives of the party did no wrong and did not deserve to be suspended from their positions in 2015. That was an aberration. Should never have happened to a party that prides itself on rule of law. And that has a lot of big lawyers who understand the law. Our constitution was set aside when Paul Afoko, myself, and Crab were suspended indefinitely. There is no provision in the MPP constitution for an indefinite suspension of the principal officers. If you want to take us out, you have to organize an emergency congress and you need 67% to do so. That never happened. So what happened was an aberration. I don't want to go back there. I've put it behind me. In spite of all that, I remain true to the values of this party. In fact, in 2016, I mobilized a lot of resources to support over 100 constituencies, Upper West, Upper East, Northern, Brunhoff, Ashanti. And those are documented. And I made it clear and gave copies to the then executives so they know. And quite recently in 2020, the president invited me personally to join him in his campaign. And you all saw what I did. I didn't ask any questions. I didn't attach any conditions. Although I knew I had not been treated fairly, I was prepared to serve this party. He called on the MPP to organize a debate for the flag bearer hopefuls in order to deepen the democracy in the party. I will be very happy if the party organizes that so that we elevate the discourse. It's not a charade. It is not a popularity contest, and it's, it's, it's not something that you want to use mobilizing crowds. That is not what we need. What we need are thinking leaders who have values, who have principles. And I do think my life in this political party right from 1991, servicing our candidates till now and being press secretary to the president for close to six years, people, the party people, they trust me, they love me, and that's why they gave me such a big mandate in Tamale. And I'm sure this time around they'll do the same. Reporting for Dwayne News, Rafik Salam. Wa. From politics, let's talk access to health. A non-governmental organization, Moving Health, has donated five tricycle ambulances uh, to five outlandish communities in the Sisala East municipality to aid their emergency services. Chief Executive Officer of Moving Health, Isaac Amwa Kwanza, noted that apart from the tricycle ambulances working to reduce maternal deaths in the municipality, they would also improve the local economy of the area. Once more, Rafiq Salam reports. The increasing cases of maternal deaths in the Sasala Enclave in time past has been attributed to inadequate emergency services in the area. Residents often struggle to transport seriously sick persons or women who are in labor at outlandish communities to hospitals on time for medical attention, sometimes resulting in their deaths. Country Director for Virtual Foundation, Mohamed Isa Batagale, recounted one of many instances that he has to yield to police from stranded family members of women who are in labor to transport them with his car to the Tumu Municipal Hospital. There was a lady, a young lady in labor that had been attended to by a traditional bike attendant and unfortunately she couldn't deliver. She became weak and couldn't even sit on a normal motorbike. So I was pleased to give her some support to the main hospital. Bringing her to my car, I saw a very weak and trail a young lady. The one, the lady accompanying her was actually even saying out of frustration that the mother passed through, passed to eternity because of this. And I said that, okay, then why don't we try to get her to the hospital? 
out of fear, we sped actually. And upon reaching one community, we bombed, we ran into a speed ram, and she delivered in my car. Rushing her to the hospital, I took a picture of her and then sent to my bosses in back in the state, indicating the plight of the rural woman. In an attempt to give life, most of them lose their lives. What can we do to help? And it is based on that we improvised two tricycle ambulances, one stationed in Bugubale, another one stationed in Bano. It is based on that we are able to raise some data, then we felt the need to invite a group that are focused on health emergency transport system. Worried about the incident, he quickly connected with Moving Health, a non-governmental organization that has a mixture of social health workers and engineers who come together to fabricate affordable emergency transportation for rural areas in the country. Moving Health has been in the Cecil Enclave since 2019 and provided the first tricycle ambulances in 2021 to five communities on a pilot base. Some concerns were however raised in the usage of the tricycle ambulance by the residents in a feedback and data collected by Moving Health and presented by his development lead, Stephen Maju. So one thing we know is that delay in accessing emergency healthcare transportation is one of the reasons why we have some mortality cases. And this is one thing that Moving Health is trying to solve, the ease in trying to access emergency transportation. Now in our final story, Bono East Regional Chairman of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, Apostle Isaac Ni Kote Jani, has urged citizens to be conscious about environmental cleanliness to protect the environment as well as prevent the outbreak of disease. He made this call during an annual cleanup exercise held in the Techiman municipality as part of the church's five year strategic plan to transform the society at the national and uh, regional levels. We have Anas Sabit who brings us more on this bit. After hours of digging, sweeping, clearing and desilting of gutters as part of its environmental care campaign that aims at improving sanitation in the country, the Bono East Regional Chairman of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, Apostle Isaac Ni Kote Jani, is charging members of the church and the general public to emulate the initiative and dedicate their time in keeping the environment clean. We are here on a cleanup exercise, which we have been doing over the years. And we are doing it all to the glory of God. And I can see the joy with which the members are participating in this cleanup exercise. When we came here, the drivers, drivers, mates, and all other uh, people around, the women, market women, have all joined in doing the cleanup. So I want to thank God that we have been able to do it this year, and also thank the traditional council very well, especially Kentahini, for the input and the way he has held the fort and helped us to do this. Apostle Nico Tijani emphasized that religious bodies command a huge following and must therefore press home the need for attitude now change. He therefore appealed for an intensive education on sanitation as well as the provision of more dustbins across the municipality. I think that indiscipline is what is disturbing us. Now, even as we clean, others litter. But with that, I think uh, we need to do more education. And then I've also realized that we don't have dustbins in this area. We don't have dustbins. And so in collaboration with Zoom Lion and other stakeholders, we'll see how we can provide uh, dustbins in this area so that uh, the education that we are doing will go down well with the people. The exercise also saw the massive support of other stakeholders and key amongst them is the Nananum of the Techman Traditional Council. Nana also attributes Siakon is a Kentahene and Tapenhene of the Tichman Traditional Council. He tells me why sanitation continues to be of interest to the traditional authorities. Like we're seeing today, this is not the first time that we're working with the Church of Pentecost. The Church of Pentecost decided to also go with the environment, decided to clean the environment, so we decided to partner with them. Last year we did this massive exercise, this year too we are repeating. And you could see that the interest of the environment, as far as the cleanliness is concerned, is, 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 is the hallmark of the Human Traditional Council. And Osadio himself had been championing this course. 
He was, however, enthused at the response from members of the general public and asked that more needs to be done to make Techiman the cleanest city in the country. This morning it was very fantastic seeing the drivers from the transport unions, especially the GPRT, the Portua, the VIP, the OA and STC, all of them were together. And the other taxi drivers too were also part. Even the Praga riders were also part. And you could see that everybody is helping. And we also want to impact that education into our people so that at any point in time, nobody will be able to drop letters around to make sure that we have the cleanest city that we want. On his part, Assemblyman for the Abanu Electoral Area, Nyaku Andrews, was thankful to the church for the exercise and appeal to the people living in the area to make sanitation their utmost priority. In fact, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, boy, ma'am, bro, no, so I'm not even at the metro anymore. I'm not even at the main stage. No, we're not. Yeah, in fact, we're not just doing it alone. So, it's all boy. Now, we're so boy. Every boy, I'm a criminal. I have to face the mob. We're crazy, ma. We say that's too many. The campaign constitutes one of the pillars of the church's five-year strategic plan to transform the society at the national and local levels. Anna Sabit, Joy News, Tichiman. It's a wrap for the news, uh, fellow Ghanaians, but do stay with us. The news review is right up next.